So in this video, we're going to look at classify wine type. And the basis of any classification model is for us to understand what logistic regression is doing, how it relates to linear regression, and how it performs classification. Let's dive right in. So again, I'm back in my Jupyter notebook. And in the chapter four, in the second section of the notebook, I have use Python to create a logistic regression model from scratch. And so you must have seen this in the last section on linear regression. And I have refactored some of the functions here, but the idea is the same. So let's dive right in. So in in one, this is a new function. You have not seen this before. And this function is called the sigmoid function. So the sigmoid function turns any variable fit in, in this case z, which is the floats. Uh, it basically turns it into, squishes it into a narrow range of 0 and 1. And there's a formula for this. You can, it's somehow, sometimes called the logistic function, the sigmoid function. And basically it squishes any number interval between 1 and 0. And so the mathematical equation for this is 1 over 1 plus the exponent to z. So let's move on to actually implementing the model. So again, we have the learning rate, which is the rate of which the weights change according to our errors. We have fit intercept, which is a Boolean. And this Boolean dictates whether we create an intercept for our model. And we again create a global variable to hold the weights so that we can both fit the weights and also use the weights to predict some probabilities. We create a function called fit, and this function takes in two parameters, the training set input denoted by x, so that guy, and the training set outputs, or the model outputs, if you may, in lowercase y, so that guy. So in this function, the first thing we do is declare the global variable weights, which allows us to take the weights variable from outside this local scope and basically write weights into this global variable so that we can use it later at prediction time. If we were to fit an intercept, what's going to happen is we call this condition and we basically add a column of ones into x. And the way we do this is we first figure out how tall is x. So here we have x dot shape, 0, 0 meaning the number of rows in x. And obviously we only want one column of this. So here we specify that the second dimension of the np1's call should be 1. Feed this shape parameter into np.1's. And we concatenate this using np.concatenate with x. And we concatenate it in the first axis. So then this column of ones will allow us to tune the weights of a constant column and that would be our intercept. And so the weights we need to initialize it so we use the function np.zeros and we basically initialize the weights to however many columns there are in x. Okay so that's basically x dot shape. Uh, the second dimension is the number of columns right. So the first dimension indexed at zero is number of rows and the second dimension indexed at one is the number of columns. So very simple. To fit this or to train the model, we use gradient descents. Note that this is like linear regression. This is just one of many optimization methods available for logistic regression. Again, we train this for a thousand epochs and that's just basically how many times the function sees the fitting function sees the data, so it sees it a thousand times. And this is where logistic regression builds on top of linear regression, right? So if you recall, linear regression does the dot product of x and its weights as well, and that's the prediction. But then because logistic regression is about classification, so it tries to classify whether something is one class or the other, using sigmoid on top of the dot product between the input and the weights allows us to sort of fit the output between 0 and 1. And the closer it is to 0, it means that we're predicting class A and then the you know 
after larger than a half means that it's class B, right? So very simple. So we basically still apply sort of like a linear uh, transformation using the dot product, but we then squish that result into an interval between zero and one and kind of treat zero as class A and one as class B and kind of predictions in between to be sort of like a confidence adjustment on like how confident something is uh, or the model is uh, between picking these two classes. So that's the main difference between linear regression and logistic regression, or you can say that how logistic regression is building on linear regression. And so again, the dot product is very simple. We take the dot product of transpose of x, and then we subtract the prediction with the correct answer, divided by the correct answer size, and that's how we find a gradient. And we basically change the gradient in a negative direction using the learning rate multiplied by the gradient. After a thousand epochs, this would have been trained, and we'll have all the optimal weights in the weights parameter. And so whenever we want to predict the probability using this model, we again feed in a list of inputs in X. We take the weights of the global space, and again, if we have an intercept, we concatenate a column of ones to X, and we basically return the prediction, right? So remember, prediction is the dot product between X and the weights, and the sigmoid function applied over it. So basically, we return a list of probabilities over the labels that we're classifying. So hopefully that clears out the air on how logistic regression works and how it relates to classification problems. In the next video, we're going to implement this classification model to classify wines. And I will see you in the next video.